Ahem. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, it's Graham Breitenstein, the host of This Week with Drunk Astrology, the podcast. And you know, at the top of every new year, it can be so easy to fall into a mindset that's like, well, it's a new year. I guess I'll like do some goals. I don't know, a couple friends are doing dry January. Maybe I should do dry January. But you know what? That's not you, and that is most certainly not me. You know, we start 2024 with Mercury, the planet of our thinking mind, stationing direct. So that means the planet that rules the way our brain functions is stopped. So we experience some brain fog, a lack of clarity. We might be a little hungry for change, a little hungry to set some goals, but we're not functioning at our full potential. That's okay, because your astrologer here has created a free resource for you to clear through your mental muck. I'm calling it the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, and it is absolutely free, 0.00. Free 99. This thing is full of science backed prompts around goal setting and astrological insights because the timing of setting your goals is just as important. And that's exactly what astrology teaches us. So, to get it, you're going to go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. And in less than a minute, you're going to download your PDF and you're going to start getting to work. And here's what's cool. In 2024 and for the next 20 years, Pluto, the planet of power, it's the source of our power as a collective, changes into Aquarius. So that means the source of power for all of us to tap into lies in Aquarian themes. What are Aquarian themes, you might be asking? Aquarian themes are community, collaboration, and communication. You are not going to be working through this journal alone. No, 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 no. You and I are going to be working together to fill this out and to manifest our most amazing year ahead. And here's the challenge. I implore you to bring in people that you admire, people that you respect, people that you love, people that you care for, whether that's family, friends, your partners, your co-workers, your teammates. Bring them into this process. The more we share this resource, the more we are all tapping into the power that is available to us. It is no longer the solo Capricorn journey. Pluto's been there, done that since 2008. For the next 20 years, our power lies in community. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to share this with the people that we love, that we respect, that we want to see win. So again, go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. It is also, if you scroll up, the first link in the show notes. Download that PDF in less than a minute. And you and I are going to do this together. Don't miss this opportunity to create your most amazing year You're going to thank me later, I promise. So now that you got your journal, why don't we hop into this week? This week's astrology in Christmas song. Me, 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 me. I'm dreaming of a winter solstice. Yes, Capricorn season begins. Ha! Reflection is the name of the game. And may Mercury rest. Retrograde, be kind. Ah, Thank you very much. (laughs) What's up, everybody? If you're not in the spirit, hopefully, that jingle jangle from yours truly 
the drunk astrologer himself <laughs> did it for you. Welcome to the podcast for the week of December 18th through the 24th, 2023. We're getting in the spirit, are we not? This is the time to be merry, the time to be bright, the time to sit the F down and reflect, reflect, reflect. That actually is the name of the game this week, and even doubly so as we get to the back half of the week. Because we do, on Thursday the 21st, have the winter solstice, which is also the beginning of Capricorn season. So we switch, you know, we got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, where we got that high vibration of Sagittarius, Jupiterian energy, live big and loud and and were visionary as all get out in the mutable fire sign of Sagittarius. And then we switch to the Earth, Capricorn, Saturn vibe for the next 30 days when that solstice hits. But you know why you've got to reflect this week. Do you know what solstice means? Solstice, let's break it up. Sol, S-O-L, the sun, and stis, to stand still, to stop. So the sun stops, and we have the shortest days and the longest nights, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So this week, as we, if you celebrate Christmas or whatever your traditions may be, If you have them at all. This week, regardless of what you may be doing, especially the back half of the week, this is a time to sit still. Now, the astrology of Thursday and Friday is pretty, pretty chaotic. There's a lot of energy there. So you might be uh, finding stillness might feel like an uphill battle. But you are challenged and you are encouraged by your astrologer here to find peace and stillness Thursday, Friday, Saturday, especially even in the midst of running around. If you're doing last minute shopping or you got to go get food and you got to prep this and do that and call cousin and and uncle this and aunt this and grandmother Mary is she coming? I don't know. Somebody's got to go pick her up. Well, she lives forty five minutes away. Whatever the story might be, you are asked and encouraged and challenged to find stillness and to reflect on this year. You know, I've been preaching this, thinking about this year as a whole and where where was your mindset where were you physically in January as you began this year what were the goals you set what were the visions you had what did you want to accomplish and go through month by month week by week if you want to get granular day by day but think back to your highlights of this year and How did you do? How did you measure up to the expectations, the goals, and the resolutions that you set this year? Now, as we're dwindling down, 2023 at least is dwindling down. How did you, how did you do? Are you, are you setting some of the same goals? Did you accomplish one part of a goal and now it's time for part two? Something to consider, because in addition to winter solstice, Mercury retrograde is active as all get out this week. So we've got chapter two of stories that began in his pre-retrograde, which goes all the way back to November 24th, right? So between November 24th and December 12th, We had chapter one of the story, the preview of what we were going to be working on while Mercury's retrograde from December 12th to January 1st. So he's doing the art of the circle back this week. So we've got a lot of connecting, a lot of 
reuniting. And doesn't this make sense, you know, just thinking about holidays and th- this is the week that everybody's going to be traveling. So on one hand, if you are traveling this week, please give yourself extra time. If you're going to the airport, if you're driving, cushion yourself Don't be surprised if you get delayed, rescheduled, canceled. Um, Mercury retrograde during holidays is never a fun time. You know, shipping and all these all these mercurial things, anything with a battery, uh, modes of transportation, appointments and schedules can go a haywire. So even if you're staying local, but you're you know you're driving somewhere, you're doing your your day-to-day activities this is a week where you want to give yourself extra freaking time because it's always like during a retrograde when you're like oh i always take this one way to get to work and then mercury retrograde shows up and all of a sudden that path you've got um oh i'll tell you a story that happened with me um i was coming out of my parking garage uh the other day and there was a recycling truck, like, just blocking, because it's a pretty narrow side street that my garage comes out of, and it was it was fully blocked. So I was like, okay, so I can't go the direction I need to go, so then I'm going to go, I'm going to take a left instead. Uh, well, I took a left, and the, um, somebody, somebody, I don't know if they're someone that lives in the building or someone, well, whatever, uh, they blocked that um, they like parked really like w- at a weird diagonal, and they blocked that street. So I was literally stuck, and I was just trying to get somewhere that was like ten minutes away, and it ended up taking me about twenty three minutes to get there. So a little over double the time it normally takes, uh, because I was a sitting duck waiting for one of them to move. So you know that's the kind of thing that Mercury retrograde can do, like even on a mundane day to day level, even if you're not traveling. These things can show up. Practice this week being more present where you are because scatterbrained Mercury can totally show his face um, when he's this active. He's got one. Where was the other one? Oh, one, two, three, four. He's got four aspects um, or important moves this week because he also retrogrades back into Sagittarius. So we start the week with Mercury retrograde in Capricorn, where he's a little more level headed. And then on Friday, we get a retrograde back into Sagittarius, where he's highly opinionated. <laughs> so we're going to have Christmas Eve, Christmas. Um, and it, then for the rest of the retrograde cycle, he's going to be in, in Sagittarius and you know, it can be a little loose lipped. Uh, and a little sharp and zingy. So that'll make for an interesting uh, time for the holidays, no? Um, And then other highlights that we have this week, we've got the quarter moon in Pisces, making us all more emotional and somber and nostalgic. It could be really good energy, though, for for reunions, uh, just to kind of be like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in so long, and, you know, hug, and that's all. That's all good. Um... And then we end the week on Sunday with with a pretty nice like forward motion. But man, uh, a mixed grab bag. The first half of the week energetically is more motion, more movement oriented, um, and uh, kind of exciting. And th- well, let me not say that the back half of the week isn't exciting because Thursday's got so many aspects. Uh, Friday too. Yeah, you know what? It's just, you know, I'm just going to go. The whole week is excitable, but back half of the week, couldn't. there is a need in the air. Um, here on Earth, <laughs> there's a need to find some peace, serenity, stillness, and reflection. Um, all of our RE words this week are going to be highly relevant with Mercury Retrograde Super Active. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I want to get in your ear real quick. There are a lot of spiritual viewpoints and perspectives that you can subscribe to. You know, there's astrology, numerology, 
feng shui, there's Akashic records, there's past life regressions, there's destiny cards. There is just any number of ways that you can tap into the universe to get insight, to help you create the life you want to live, to create abundance and prosperity, love and relationships, connection, all those things. And I recognize that there is a lot and that at times it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to figure out who to go to, who can I listen to, who can I trust. So this is why I created the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series. If you're not already listening to it, it's available wherever you're listening to this podcast already, but you can also watch each interview on DrunkAstro.com. There's a whole page there for it, and I've linked the series in the show notes. So in this series, one, I want you to I want you to know all the d- different tools that you can use to manifest big this year because the life that you want, the life that you deserve, it is waiting for you and there are a number of methods to consider, spiritual and non-spiritual. Okay? I'm in this series, I'm not only talking to Tali from the Astro Twins, not only talking to Christina Hollinger, a feng shui expert, about how to feng shui your living space, your workspace, to create a space that is high vibration and that attracts the life you want to live. I'm not only talking to a crystal expert about what crystals are good for the energy of 2024's unique energy. Not only talking to a symbologist, a destiny card reader. Have you ever heard of that? Because I hadn't heard of that until I met um, CJ, who is the destiny card reader I bring into this um, series. Um, I'm not only talking to spiritual folks. I'm talking to an intimacy expert because love and relationships are at the top of a lot of our list, single or not single. We can all learn how to be more intimate with each other, be more authentically expressing ourselves. I'm also talking to Elise Joan, a beach body super trainer and longevity expert, because it's not about just creating an amazing life. It's about living a long life, one that you love, one that you want to be healthy for, one that you want to actually stay in for the long haul. So this series is set up to to get you in alignment from all different angles. So if you haven't already, go catch up on the episodes that have already aired. And the new episodes that are coming, every single Wednesday, a new episode will drop until the series is finished. So go back, drunkastro.com. There's a whole page for how to manifest big in 2024. All the videos are there. Watch the interviews. There's a link to this in the show notes. It'll get you right where you need to be. Okay? We're doing this this year. You're doing this this year. Your your, um, Manifest Big in 2024 journal, that is the foundation of what you're going to use this year to set goals that you're actually going to achieve. Now, all these other tools in the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, these are all going to enhance your vibe. Enhance the vibe of your living space, your heart set, your mindset, your body set. You are going to be. There's no way by using the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, by tapping into the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, this is all you need. It's all you need. Okay? So in case you haven't got into it, this was just a little reminder. needed to get that in your ear. Let's get back to this episode and keep up this vibration. Um, So we're going to talk about it all. Um, But before we do, I want to give you uh, some exciting news board things. So first and foremost, how are you liking the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series? Okay, hopefully you've been listening. There have been two episodes so far. Episode one, how to build a legit a, a legit AF altar with Stephanie uh, from RitualsByTarot.com. Uh, that was an incredibly insightful episode and the perfect way to kick off the entire series because having an altar, at least one, 
in your living space is going to change the game in terms of setting your intentions for 2024. And so since the episode, so I recorded it, and then since launching it and listening to it, I have done, okay, let me see, I've got one, two, I've got three, four, five, and then six, seven. Oh, so I have seven altars now in my 525 square foot apartment. (laughs) And you'll see, like, altars aren't like, they don't have to be these big things. There are VIP elements, which Stephanie covers in that episode. Like, what what are the most important elements to have? And then there's there's some cool things that you can do creatively, which is where I shine. Um, so it's like I, I added some of these elements in some of my altars, and then other ones I got really creative and put a picture frame there that was indicative of something that I'm manifesting. Um, so it it just like it, it, and then there's some there's elements to an altar that you don't even see that highly affect the energy and the vibration of your altar. So anyway. Watch episode one if you haven't. Go back. It's it's in this podcast library. So if you just go to the show and you scroll down, you're going to see starting on, I believe it was December 6th. Yes. Starting on December 6th, that's when that first episode came out. Uh, there have been two episodes a week. So there's been the weekly podcast that you're listening to right now on, you know, that comes out on Sunday. And then Wednesday and every Wednesday through mid-January, there's going to be a How to Manifest Big episode. And I'm talking to specialists and experts in their fields. So last week, I dropped my episode with the best crystals for 2024 with my friend Shauna McDonald from the Crystal Shrine in Burbank. It's the store that I used to do um, – I was there every single week doing readings as the in-house astrologer back in 2020, uh, mostly 2022, and brought her in because one of the elements of a legit altar are crystals. And Shauna and I discussed the astrology of 2024 and what crystals would be great to harness the energy that 2024 brings and you know what stones are going to be more grounding what stones are going to invite power and transformation um what stones will help you know connect you to spirit uh you know to your angels so we talk about like it's like you build your altar and then it's just by design obviously you build your altar you get the crystals and, and now like everything is getting more aligned with the energy that's ahead because January February and March just be ready uh, because there's a lot of transformative aspects taking place those first three months of 2024 that are really going to uh, shift the collective energy that we're all experiencing. Just you wait. Um, and then this week, I am I, I'm super excited again because we're just building on on from episode one all the way through the last episode that's going to be in uh, late mid to late January. Um, this week, I'm talking to Tali from the Astro Twins. Uh, you might know them uh, as the astrologers for Elle magazine. They also have a, a show called Cosmic Love on Amazon Prime. They they do yearly uh, horoscope books, like one for everybody, and then they have them broken down for each sign. Uh, this year, they dropped planners. And so Tali and I discussed the astrology of 2024 and how every single sign can optimize the energy of 2024. So this is really... Every single sign gets a reading for multiple events that take place next year. So you want you want to prepare yourself. Watch one and two so that you're ready for episode three because then you're going to get the readings and you're going to understand even more why the crystal Shauna talks about are going to be important to add to an altar so that your vibration and you are uber connected to the energy that's not just in the collective, but unique to you based on your sign. So 
Wanted to put that in your ear because this series is just getting juicier and each episode builds on itself. So get in because you're. I want you to manifest big and I'm talking to all these experts because I don't want it to just come from me. I want you to get a comprehensive look at all of the shit. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's just better. Uh, and my Jupiter's in Aquarius, and I've been realizing like, oh, my abundance is based in community and building community. And the community, you, that's already here, I want to show more of the community at large in the spiritual space. And, you know, the people that are my readers, because the week after this week, I bring in the like one of my main go-to readers when it's time for me to get a reading this woman CJ is who I go to so anyway uh you're you're going to get exposed to a lot and you're by the time you're like at the end of January you're going to be you're going to be so ready and so prepared and i imagine and my fingers are crossed that you're going to feel excited about what's ahead for you um because you'll be so aligned next item on the news board um, priority shipping for all your Zodiac candles and cosmic body oils is the name of the game now. You have until the 22nd, which is, hold on, you have, uh, 22nd? No, I'm sorry. You have until the 20th. <laughs> let me not, <laughs> let me not, uh, speak, uh, out of term, uh, when it comes to all this sh the shipping fami uh, formulas and things, because boy, when you run a product store, baby, it's a whole nother ball game. So uh, priority shipping is available through Wednesday the twentieth for guaranteed delivery by Christmas. If you are like freaking out at the end of the week and you need something shipped express. You can uh, make your order on Friday the 22nd, and it should arrive next day, Saturday the 23rd. Um, that is the, um, that's the, the word coming from the post office. I, I did my research. So you can still get your Zodiac candles and cosmic body oils this week, but just with priority shipping to guarantee delivery by Christmas. Um, but... What if you don't want a product? What if you want, I don't know, to gift a reading to somebody? You don't have to do shipping for that one, baby. I have gift cards for every single type of reading I offer on DrunkAstro.com available. So if you want to gift a reading, gift insight, gift knowledge, gift the, the knowledge of their purpose uh, to yourself even, um, gift cards are available if you go to the reading, the book of reading page on drunkastro.com. There is a link for gift cards there. And you can give you can give the gift of insight and timing and understanding. I think that's pretty cool. And last but not least, because we are talking so much about Mercury Retrograde this week, um I delivered a bonus episode to all the Daily Dose of Stars subscribers. That's the Daily Podcast. Um, the ultimate Mercury retrograde hack. And I was noticing in the in my just my immediate environment that I was having friends say, like, oh yeah, like I want to like reach out to so and so, but I know it's Mercury retrograde, so I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait till the new year. And I was like, skip it, beep, 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 beep. Hold up, hold on, huh? What? No, that is a not. That is not what you do during Mercury retrograde. No, 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 no. And so I realized that I had to fulfill my cosmic duty, and it's. It's um, it, it's it's a whole art and craft and science in itself how to work Mercury retrograde. And in this case, I'm calling it the, the ultimate Mercury retrograde hack. Because when you know the inner workings of Mercury retrograde, it's actually quite simple. And it's a quite a powerful tool to use... Because we get three to four Mercury retrogrades every single year. If you don't, if you just spend these whole periods of time, I mean, the whole season can last two months. So if you, 
are not if if you're just a sitting duck because it's Mercury retrograde and you 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 are just operating under the mindset that like well nothing sticks during a Mercury retrograde so I'm not gonna do anything. Um, then we as a as a spiritual community and the astrologers that you listen to or any other you know cosmic folk that you information we've all done you a disservice if that's how you um, operate during a mercury retrograde um, because that is not the case at all magical things happen and can happen connections can happen during retrograde um some sometimes they're they're some of the most special connections and unions but you have to understand a perspective you have to understand how to approach them so if you're not a Daily Dose subscriber, I highly encourage you to scroll down in the show notes and click the link to just explore what we do in Daily Dose of Stars. We are a we are a lively bunch in there, a lively community, and I'm going to be um, introducing some exciting things to that community in the new year. So, you know, uh, but there's a lot of bonus episodes, a lot of teaching tools. You want to learn my moon mapping technique how to track the moon in your chart so you know when and where uh, certain parts of your chart are being stimulated by these all these different planets, Uh, specifically the moon, because we talk about the moon. We track the moon every single day because she changes signs every two and a half days, which means she's hitting a different part of your chart every two and a half freaking days. So if she's going to dictate our day-to-day flow, then we need to know about it because if you've got uh, I don't know, something like what I experienced, um, what was that, maybe a couple of months ago now, that I needed to renegotiate one of my deals, and I I woke up one day, and it had been heavy on my mind, and I listened to the Daily Dose and was like, oh, the moon's in Sagittarius. That's my fourth house of, of um, home, family, uh, emotional security, financial security. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, so... I know that my fourth house is influenced by the mindset that you know you got to live and learn. You've got to you've got to be active. You've got to take action. You got to take a risk. So I reached out to who I needed to talk to, and uh, to my surprise, we were able to talk same day. And in a conversation that was less than six minutes, I doubled my income, and that was out of my comfort zone. And Jupiter. Wherever Jupiter lives in your chart, it's where you got to be a little out of your comfort zone. And because I have Sagittarius as the ruler of my fourth house, this I knew that I needed to take a leap and to just put astrology in motion and put my chart in motion. And I did. And I doubled my income. So there's all these techniques. You know, we had a Venus retrograde over the summer. There's a whole lesson in there that you can still take with you and it is still applicable to just your Venus in your chart, period, right? So lots of bonuses. Consider this as you, um, as we come down to the uh, end of the year as a way of manifesting, getting in sync with your chart and the sky above, you know, we, we, we do, we, we track a lot in the weekly, but the daily is where you're going to like get intimate with your chart and you're going to start understanding yourself and the timing of events in your life way better. Um, so mostly right now or most recently, this ultimate Mercury retrograde hack is going to be uh, a, a bonus that I think a lot of you will benefit from digesting. Um, So that you're not just like a sitting freaking duck, especially in a week like this week when Mercury Retrograde is really asking you to to use him and to to be in alignment with with what's going on. So let's let's dovetail into the astrology this week. On Monday, Mercury Retrograde has his second trine to Jupiter at 628 a.m. So Mercury in Sagittarius Retrograde, of course, um, in this trine, so trine is a 120 degree angle. It is juicy, collaborative, flow, ease. Um, in conversation with Jupiter retrograde in Taurus. So we've got Jupiter, which is about growth and expansion. 
uh, Taurus, relationship, love, and money. Um, so an easy conversation um, around all these themes. Mercury and Sagittarius is your vision. Uh, I am using Mercury and Sagittarius right now. I'm thinking of like, how are, what are all the ways I want to grow in the new year? So it's a, still a great time to implement and to begin whatever you want to see for yourself in the new year. Start now. Uh, but this is a circle back conversation in this Ultimate Mercury Retrograde Hack. I'm, I, I give you all the dates that you need to know. The part one, the part two, and the part three. Um, they are all interconnected. And so when you understand the, the one, two, three of it all, then, then you can start getting real strategic. On Tuesday the 19th, we have the second quarter moon in Pisces at 10.39 a.m. So if you look at 27 degrees, 35 minutes of Pisces in your birth chart. Now, you can also look at the mutables. So Virgo, Pisces, Gemini, Sagittarius. If you've got any um, planets or house cusps, that start yeah maybe between 25 and 29 degrees so again virgo pisces gemini sagittarius the mutable signs um 20 or anything at 27 degrees uh, between 25 and 29 degrees in your chart um just broad spectrum you know it doesn't have to be the mutable signs if you have something at or near 27 in your chart this pisces quarter moon is calling for a balance it's also calling for an ending um, you might find that you're a little somber, a little emotional, a little nostalgic. Um, a quarter moon in Pisces sits between last week's new moon in Sagittarius, which is all about starting your New Year's goals, um, and then next week's Cancer full moon. So this is a a cut, you know, cut the cord of something. If there's an emotional attachment to something, someone that is toxic, that's not serving you, that's not that's kind of energetically blocking you from knowledge, not blocking you from, uh, you know, feeling in your body, feeling uh, connected to, uh, like emotionally connected to how you want to see yourself grow and soar and shine next year. First half of the week is good to kind of trim that, come acknowledge, acknowledge where it's coming from, and. And it, it's it's an opportunity to really just say like, oh, this is in the way of my manifestations, my resolutions, my goals for myself. So what what where do you need to kind of wring out all this like extra baggage that just isn't serving you? That's what that quarter moon really wants. Um, on Wednesday, hoodwinks galore. We have a Venus Uranus opposition at eleven oh four p.m. Venus is diving in the deep. Um, of relationships while she's in Scorpio, opposite Uranus in Taurus. This can be a lover's quarrel. And it, it is 11.04 p.m. Pacific on Wednesday, so this does flavor into Thursday as well, which is a very busy day, cosmically speaking. Um, but Venus-Uranus opposition is something you don't see coming. It can be spending unexpected money. It can be, um, unfortunately, Uranus is a higher octave of Mercury. It could be um, travel situation, travel issues, um, not being like the, the separation of relationship can be. One, it could be a breakup, but two, it can be like I can't get to you because my flight's delayed, canceled, rescheduled, etc. So Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to keep our eye out on that. Um. Can be an opportunity. Sometimes those, you know, the opposition sometimes do like they bring revelation and they bring like a handshake. You know, two sides coming together. But Uranus and is is the destabilizer. So this really is like, uh oh. Um, it doesn't have to be uh oh. Let me not say it's not. There's not a doom and gloom. I you know I don't do doom and gloom astrology, but um th th there is just like be flexible how about that that's the message for venus uranus opposition wednesday late and thursday be flexible on thursday here we go we've got capricorn season slash the winter solstice at 7 27 p.m so we're shifting out of that 
visionary, Sagittarius, fiery energy into Saturn's domain, where we're more disciplined and responsible. And tradition, you know, there's there's no, um, it's not a coincidence that celebrating Christmas and the traditions around it are fall in Capricorn season because it is the sign of tradition. Some some of us and a lot of us out there, you know, we're just tasked to create our own friggin' traditions. But also on Thursday, we've got Mercury retrograde sextiling Saturn at 4.33 a.m. for the second time. So again, there's a circle back there. Saturn being, you know, this is a lot of work energy, right? Mercury retrogrades in Capricorn and Saturn's in Pisces. So that sextile, uh, th- there's forward motion, right? There's movement. So if the Venus Uranus kind of throws you off, there is likelihood that, you know, there's Maybe Mercury retrograde in this case actually plays in your favor. Um, But then we also have Mars Uranus quincunx at 644 a.m. Quincunxes are those annoying eye roll aspects. Mars in Sagittarius. I want to go. I want to fly. I want to soar. Uranus in Taurus and a quincunx is, yeah, but we're going to have to reroute you this way. There's a rerouting on Thursday you know, winter solstice is also sit your ass down, sit still. So we got that component too. So Thursday is a busy friggin' day, okay? There's a lot going on here. Uh, so I think flexibility is going to be key midweek, sp- Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, don't get in a fight. Please don't get in a fight on Friday. We have the sun conjuncting Mercury retrograde in Capricorn. This is... Uh, every time the sun and Mercury come together, they they combust each other, and ev- everybody just thinks they're right. Self righteousness can be, you know, it can be my way or the highway because it's in Capricorn and it's both sides knowing better than the other. So fighting has no purpose on Friday. Just walk away. Say, why don't we come back to this um, after the holidays, or why don't we? Uh, I'm going to take a break. And I'm going to think about what you're saying, and then I'm going to come back and then, you know, problem solve, find a resolution. But there's no need to fight. Uh, it just it just won't. It's just not it on Friday. It's really not. And then late Friday night at 10, 18 p.m. Pacific, we've got Mercury retrograde leaving Capricorn, backing into Sagittarius, where he is opinionated. He is loud. He's, uh, you know, bigger than, you know, bigger than life. So it is great in terms of going from Mercury retrograde and Capricorn where we're thinking about the structures we, we got to put in place to make our resolutions come to life. Uh, like for me, I have been deep cleaning my apartment i have been rearranging certain uh things my desk faces a a new way and i am more grounded more inspired more energized in this position uh when we get to feng shui in the how to manifest big series you're gonna learn about this it's a huge it's a huge shift to um change if you have a home office uh to change the um the the space and the layout and it can make it can make a huge difference um in high level work that you produce and your willingness and motivation to get work done so we've been getting that that it's been like mercury and capricorn for me was like i can't i can't manifest a a great year like this like the, the layout isn't working for me uh you know i've needed to dust underneath different surfaces and things, you know, and it was like, okay, I started with my altars because there's a whole component about cleaning them. And then it was like, oh no, there's a bigger thing here. Well, now going from that Capricorn energy now to Sagittarius, it's like, okay, now that I've rearranged my apartment, now that I've deep cleaned, now, how do I feel about my goals and my visions? And now what's it look like? What does it feel like? So it's an exploration there on a deeper level of like, you know, dreaming big again. And then last but not least, Sunday, we've got the sun newly in Capricorn, sextiling Saturn in Pisces. 
earth and water mixing fertile mud. There is positive forward motion on Christmas Eve. That is also great connections in tradition. Sun in Capricorn and working with Saturn, which is its ruling planet in Pisces. There is a like great nostalgic traditional connection and it's on its feet, right? So a great, a great day to gather um, moons and Gemini that day too. So, you know, bringing in like friends and family and found family, uh, everybody coming together. Uh, Christmas Eve has really nice energy um, all in all. Um, and so that's the vibe. That's the vibe this week. I hope you have a great week. I really do. Um, next week we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get you ready for Christmas day and, uh, the week, the last week of the new year. So get ready for that. I hope you have an awesome week. Uh, remember, scroll down in the show notes for the manifest big series, the, um, gift cards, the, uh, Zodiac Candles and Cosmic Body Oils, Priority Shipping. Uh, We got you covered for all your cosmic goods and cosmic needs. All right. Um, Have a great week. I'll see you on Instagram. I'll see you in your inbox. And until next time, bye. Hey, one last thing before we go. Who are three people you could share this episode with? Who would benefit from learning astrology in real time? from learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos, from tracking the patterns and cycles to seeing it in real time in motion. Can you text them right now? Can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. I would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. And you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.